everybody, Alec Berry back again for another Q&A, your resident road safety expert at Mobility Engineering. Thank you for tuning in and thank you for sending in your questions. Remember to keep sending on in those questions. We love answering them. We love looking up the info and um, getting all out to you. And once again, remember to hit that subscribe button. Looks a little bit like this down there. Um, hit that. We'd love to have you on board and hear your support to get to 1,000 uh, subscribers. So thanks very much and let's get into the question. So today's question comes in from a uh, public person, Kelvin. Um, Kelvin has sent in through a question in regards to rearward facing child restraints, which is a child restraint that looks a little bit like this, and I'll explain what he's asked. So he's hit a bit of confusion. He's out on the market and he wants to buy one, and he said, I was looking at two of the um, two different ones, and I was looking in their owner's manuals, and what it says, one of them, it says the angle of the baby should be around 40 degrees, and the other one says the angle of the baby's back should be around about 45 degrees. And um, what's the right answer? Because I thought uh, that this whole system was standardized. I thought they all kind of had to be the same and, and they're all kind of built the same and built similar and they're built to the same standard. So what's going on? I'm confused, please help me. And so what I thought I'd do is I'd explain to you guys, the first thing is what we explain when we're doing training. Uh, what is the ideal situation for rearward facing? Why we have rearward facing? And also the laws and basically why you would face that confusion. So. First of all, a rearward facing seat is like this, where the child is facing out the back of the vehicle. Um, so that's kind of, they're facing rearwards, that's why they call it rearward facing. Typically it's for kids, as per the law, from zero to six months. However, we recommend you pull your child in there as long as possible, roughly around about 12 months is, the, um, is, is sort of where it's at, is where we recommend for you to stay in there. As long as they fit, as long as they're comfortable, keep them in there as long as possible. I've got a friend who has a child who's two and a half, it's a very small two and a half year old child, still sitting rearward facing, child is comfortable, um, you know, the child is safe and much safer. So, and why is it much safer and why do we have rearward facing? So rearward facing is for two main reasons. We have rearward facing because it has a reclined angle and for a little baby, particularly when they're first born, they don't have very strong back and neck muscles and back and neck self support. So we need to have them reclined like that so they can support themselves. However, in the event of an accident, also going rearward facing is a lot better because if I go rearward facing and I impact into something, the force of the accident is spread across the whole back of my body. However, if I go forward facing, what the force of my body is only spread on the straps that are holding me in place. So that means, let's say, at an accident of around about 50 kilometers per hour, the weight of our body increases by about 30 times. So if you weigh about 100 kilos, that's 3,000 kilos moving forward. Or if you're a little, let's say, 10 kilo baby, that's 300 kilos moving forward. And 300 kilos is going to be held in by two straps. So that's a lot more force on your body than if you have the 300 kilos spread across the whole back of your body. So that's the advantage of having rearward facing, and that's why we tend to prescribe rearward facing for as long as possible. And that's also why the rearward facing does have to be up on a little bit of an angle because it has to kind of mix between two jobs. It has to have enough of a recline so it supports that baby's weakened, uh, weakened back and neck muscles. And at the same time, it has to be upright enough so the baby doesn't slide out of it and it actually impacts into the back of the seat in the event of an accident. So that's kind of the mixture what you want to have. Now, what we have found in the real world, like what, what you're showing us in terms of the owner's manuals are 40 degrees and 45 degrees. Um, when you look at the Australian standard, what that recommends is a, a range of 26 degrees to 40 degrees. And you've got one that's 45, and I'll explain why that's 45. But their recommendation is a range, 26 degrees to 40 degrees. And when we do training, and what we found in our uh, 20 plus years in this industry of training and, and consulting in this area, the ideal angle we tend to recommend is around about 30 degrees. So it's just under the halfway point, and this is sitting around about that. So the halfway point is around about 45, that's probably around about there, and you'll find this sits around about 30 degrees. And that's the ideal situation for comfort, and so that gives you the most amount of recline, but enough upright angle to hold the child in place. So that's what we want to go for. However, uh, Kelvin has found an owner's manual that says 45 degrees, and as I was saying before, the standard says 40 degrees is the maximum. So how can this seat still be compliant? So the seat, first of all, if it is a seat that is sold on the Australian market, it has to meet the Australian standards. It will have to have an Australian standard sticker on it, a little sticker that um, has little uh, ticks on it, little white ticks with a red box. 
Um, and so that means that it is safe, legal, has been tested, it has gone through all the checks and balances in order for it to be sold on the Australian market. You can have a strong trust in that sticker and that label. So the fact that it's got 45 degrees on the owner's manual means that engineers and a third party has actually gone through that owner's manual, they've read it, and they've looked at the testing reports, they've looked at the standard, and they've okayed it. So how would they okay 45 degrees when the standard says 40 degrees? What they do is the manufacturer and the engineers, the people that make the seats, they, as long as they can justify that the seat will still be safe and it's still going to do the job that the standard asks it to do, and they can prove that by crash testing and, and all this other stuff, then it's okay for them to go outside the standards requirements. Because the standards, what they require is to keep the child safe. When they talk about angles and straps and all these kind of things, the whole end point is keeping the child safe. So if you can demonstrate you can keep the child safe using another way, they will accept it because they've got people that are looking at the standard, looking at your seat, looking at all of that and the testing requirements. And as long as you can demonstrate that it's going to be safe, it's okay. So the point of the video is we were asked, we have a seat that's 40 degrees and 45 degrees. I've given you a whole bunch of background information as to why that would be and whether it's legal. Is it legal? Is it standardized? What's the rules? 40 degrees is okay, 45 degrees is okay, as long as it's mentioned in the owner's manual by the manufacturer and you can trust the process that it has been checked by a third party engineer that is independent of this company and then it gets tested and checked by another third party independent organization and then it gets sold onto the market. So it is, if it is a seat that you are buying from a baby shop that has got the Australian standard sticker, perfectly legal, perfectly safe, it's been tested, it's been complied. If you want to know why they've got the extra five degrees, how they've done that, the people that know that information is them, it's the manufacturers. You'd have to contact them and see if you can squeeze that information out of them. I would take a guess, they'd probably say that's their intellectual property, but that's up to you to see if you can find that out from them. So hopefully that helps. Thanks very much for tuning in and don't forget to send in your questions. We love to get your questions. And once again, thank you, Lily. We have a subscribe button down there. It looks a little bit like this. Hit that subscribe button. We want you on board the channel. Um, we're bringing you more and more content this year, more and more videos. Uh, so thanks very much for tuning in and see you next time.